Okay, in this video we're just going to finish off the payment form. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate if there's any money left to pay and if there is, update the screen here, so update the amount to pay and if not we're going to generate our event to say that the payment made was successful. So let's take a look at that. First job is to go into the click handler of the payment button. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is we're just going to declare a decimal value and I'm just going to call that total and that's just going to hold uh, how much they've got left to pay. I'm going to do a quick pass of various the various uh, text boxes, retrieve the values and then hopefully do the calculation with them. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, the total equals now I've got my two text boxes so if we just go back there I've got the amount to pay and the payment amount so I'm going to take the amount to pay and I'm going to subtract that from the payment amount okay so what should happen here is if they've put in say three pound but there's ten pounds to pay it will do that subtraction now obviously these are text boxes so I need to do something else with them so the first thing is I'm just going to get the text value from both of those Again, at the minute these are both texts, so we need to do a conversion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a decimal dot pass in front of them. So I'm going to pass that one first of all and do the same with this one. And that's going to do the subtraction. And I've just noticed I've got a lowercase letter, so I put that back to capital. And semicolons finish that. So hopefully I've got the total amount. Now the next thing to do is to check if they have actually paid. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if the total this amount is still greater than zero. So if there is something still left to pay, what I'm going to do with this is just update the text to uh, the text amount to pay. So txt amount to pay equals and that's going to be set to total. Now, again, that at the moment is a decimal. That's a string. So what I need to do is just put the text property of that in. And remember to cast that back to a string. So that will then take the total and put it back in the amount to pay. If there isn't anything else, the only thing we've got to do then is calculate if there's any change to give. Now, that will obviously be if the total is uh, less than zero. That's the change amount. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to display a simple message box. Uh, let's just put that in. So, simple message box there saying, uh, please give. And then we can append that to the total amount of change. So, we'll probably just do a string dot format to make it look a bit better. So, string dot format, and we need a uh, uh, curly bracket. It's going to have one argument that's going to be of type currency. So string.format and then we're going to format the total because that should be the amount that's left. Um, and obviously if this is a change amount it's going to give a, a negative number. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to say minus total there just so that the change amount is positive. Uh, check we've got everything in there. So bracket, bracket. So one missing there, one for the start. And hopefully then that will show us how much change to give. And of course once we've done that, the last job then is to raise our custom event that says okay the payment has been now made um, it's okay to finish that transaction so I'm just semicolon to finish that and bring that back in line so we do the calculation if it's bigger than zero just re-update the amount to pay let it go round again let them uh, enter some more money if not uh, calculate the change to give display that in a box and generate the event the only thing we might want to do in terms of making this a little bit more robust is if we are passing here uh, this could go wrong if they enter a silly value. So one option would be to use a try uh, catch block here. So this would allow the computer to try and do that. And if it went wrong, to catch the error and to run a, a little bit of code underneath. So we're actually going to say try and do that calculation first. Then if that does indeed uh, generate an error, then we can do something different. So what we could do here is put something like a message box um, just to say you know, an error has occurred. So message box and error has occurred. Please enter a, um, a valid 
and mount. Okay, so just a simple thing there. Now, obviously, we want to try that. If we'd run the catch, um, once that had been displayed, it would carry on running the code. So the only other thing is really here, um, we just need to tell it to, to finish and return. So I'm just going to put in there is a return statement to say, just jump back out of that and don't run anything underneath. And the return would just, you know, end that uh, method call there. So that should basically work. So I'm just going to save that up and check for some errors. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So if we open up the point of sale, let's see what we get. Um, we'll put in a couple of products and we'll go pay. Um, now, one of the things is we haven't got the amount of pay yet, so that's not coming across onto this form, so we need to address that first of all. But let's just put some values in. So amount to pay £12, and let's just put in that they've paid three. Let's just see what we get. So you can see the amount to pay has been reduced there. So that's good. And let's say we pay £10, make the payment. And you can see there it says, please give £1 change and OK. So that's working and we can see that the event is being generated. So the final thing to do here is we really need to get this value to appear on this form. So that's not very difficult to do. We just need to update that. So let's close this down and do that. To make that work, we're going to have to go back into our, um, uh, let's find the right one, the coffee shop point of sale. So let's just go to design view. So if you remember, we have a variable in this form that stores the total. So let's just go to view code and we can see that. So view the code there. So if you remember, if we go to the top here, we've got this variable transaction total. So the only thing we need to do here is before that form opens, and if you remember we do that underneath at the bottom on this event down here let's just find that okay so here we do we go payment is a new payment form we show it and we add the event the only thing we're going to have to do here is change the payment dot and if you remember we've got the amount the payment amount and we need to set that equal to our transaction total save that up um, and if you remember then, if I just go back onto payment here, I just go back into the event handler and have a look at the top, you can see that we've actually got a getter and a setter method. So payment amount here sets the text amount to pay's text to equal whatever they've passed in. So if I just run that through, let's see if that's fixed that problem. Open the point of sale. Uh, we will put some items in, press pay, and there we have it. The 1245 has been passed across. Let's say we uh, give £15, payment made, oh, now, there we go, we've got an error that's appeared. Now, the reason we've got that error is at the minute we've got this uh, this pound sign at the front now, and it can't pass with that. So, luckily, our try catches definitely work, but we need to do something with this. So, let's go and have a quick look at that, fix that problem. So, we go back into our form, let's go and have a look here. And you can see at the minute it's because we're formatting it. So we've got a couple of options here. Before we do our conversion here, the, the easiest thing to do would be to just trim away that pound sign. So we could just literally do that uh, very, very easily. So you can see we've got the payment amount and the amount to pay. So what we want to do here is if I go inside that, I could actually just add an extra bit. I'll just put the trim at the end there. So I can just say trim and I want to trim the start and I can tell it what to trim away so I'm just going to tell it to get rid of that pound st uh, that pound sign at the start there um, so we've got text amount dot pay dot text get rid of the pound sign at the start then do the pass so let's just try that open the point of sale let's try that out a couple of items press pay formatted correctly hopefully our trim start will get rid of that pound sign for us so let's just try that Payment made, brilliant. Please give £2.55, and we probably should say change there. Press OK, and you can see our event has been generated. So the only thing to do is to close that form down once we, the event has been caught and to complete the transaction. And we'll look at how we do that in the next video. Uh, one thing that is just worth mentioning at the minute, uh, we would like to prevent them clicking on any buttons when the payment uh, dialog is there. So I'm just going to show you how you quickly fix that problem. 
so I'll just go back into uh, coffee shop design view um, I'm just going to go and view the code of that and all I'm going to do here is just change one little bit you can see here I've got payment.show I'm just going to change that to show dialog and what that's going to do is turn that into a dialog form uh, a modal form which means when I run it and I click on this when I choose to press pay now you can see I can't click anything else I have to finish this option off here okay so that's basically a simple fix for that